Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. Spring it on with 40 to 70% off almost everything at Gap Factory and GapFactory.com. Matching styles for the family are on sale, too. Shop it all through April 12th. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dale Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought by UFC Finn Temecula, Golden Road Brewery, BetUS, Tick Pick, and Chargers Bolt family. If this is your first time tuning into the show, you can, of course, like and subscribe to us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, of course, on Apple and Spotify or wherever you choose to digest your weekly NFL podcast. Dan Wolkenstein, we're still a week away actually less than a week away from the beginning of the free agent frenzy. But man, there was a shakeup, not just with the Chargers, but in the entirety of the AFC West as a whole. Um, What a Tuesday it was, as a matter of fact. And I'm happy that we're back on here live to talk about this. Obviously, we have a lot to get into. And uh, outside of the big news as it relates to the Chargers, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the upcoming free agency uh, frenzy as the Chargers have a lot of money to spend. (laughs) And we'll see what they're going to do with it. So we'll be going through a lot uh, throughout the show today. Uh, happy that you guys are joining us. But Dan Wolkenstein, first and foremost, before we get into everything, how are you, sir? I am great. Today is a great day. Um, holy crap, Jake. The Chargers just re-signed Mike Williams in a day which I think all of us probably thought that the Chargers were going to be franchise tagging. Some of us were worried, fearful that they might just be letting him go. All kinds of rumors are swirling around where the Chargers might go if they go to the draft or whatever, free agency. Bam! Mike Williams, three-year, $60 million contract extension. We'll get into the details in a bit. Mike Williams, whole lot of stays in L.A. for the next three years or at least two years. There's probably an out. We don't know all the contract details yet. But first and foremost, before we get into like all of the specifics and all the comments and jazz again welcome to Chargers unleashed for folks who have not joined us live previously welcome let's have some fun uh if you guys have any comments questions concerns topics you want us to talk about please put them in the comments below or next to us and we will go ahead and try to breathe them off live as much as we can uh we'll try to be, give good to be comments. back live it doesn't feel good and we haven't done a live show the dudes are flowing and it feels, feels good. damn good. It feels good. Uh, Skyler Littlefield, what's going on? Thank you for joining in. Steve Demko, what is up? Welcome to Chargers Unleashed. Angel Flores, good to see you. Shred74, welcome. Matthew Trasinski, I'm terrible with last names. I'm terrible with pronunciation. I apologize. Yes, Mike Williams extension. Hell yes. All right, so Jake. How nervous were you waking up this morning that Mike Williams was not going to be a charger? I mean, I wasn't nervous given everything that we had heard from Brandon Staley. I mean, Staley's essentially been elated to keep Mike Williams since the final game of the regular season and the unfortunate loss against the Las Vegas Raiders. You've heard how much he's talked about him immediately after the game. If you were watching the NFL combine this week, you heard him talking about him at, (laughs) at length 
in his interviews this past week. So you knew that the Chargers were going to make a commitment to him. And whether that was through the franchise tag or if that was to a long-term extension, you knew that they were going to try to do whatever it was that they could to keep him on the team. They did not want to let him hit the market. And as Jerry Jones once said, deadlines make deals. I mean, I'm, I'm with you, Dan. Everything that we had seen over the last couple of days, it looked like it was just another franchise tag, another franchise tag, doesn't matter who the position was. And you saw tight ends getting it. You saw the big name wide receivers getting it. And you're like, okay, this looks like it's going to be a trend. The same thing for Mike Williams. And then sure enough, with about two hours to go before the deadline hits, bam, three years, 60 million, 40 million guaranteed, 28 in the first year. You keep the nucleus of the Chargers weapons together along with Keenan Allen to go along with Justin Herbert. Um, Obviously, the Chargers had a lot of questions still looking for that wide receiver three. They would have had it even more if they were to let Mike Williams walk or if they did not end up uh, coming to a long term deal with him. But, Dan, this is something that we talked about on the podcast uh, even before the end of the season when we were talking about this aspect for Mike Williams. I personally thought that they were going to franchise tag him. Me too. Because I felt like it gave him the most flexibility short-term and long-term, whether or not you wanted to do a long-term deal with him or not, whatever the, those numbers were going to look like at that point. Um, or, you know, should he regress and the Chargers draft another wide receiver and you give another year to Josh Palmer to develop and then maybe you let him walk. But at the end of the day, for the contract numbers that he put up, for the real contract numbers that are still going to be coming out as far as the overall cap hit for the first year, it's looking very promising and a lot of flexibility is there, still there for the Chargers to make some big free agency splashes. You have to obviously put in the expected cuts of certain players that are still knocking against the cap that we would hopefully expect to hear some news in between now and next week. So the Chargers are still going to have a lot of money to wheel and deal in this free agency period. Again, Tom Telesco has never had this much cap space, nor this many draft picks in his 10-year tenure as the Chargers GM. We're going to see what he's going to be able to do with it. And so far, starts it off with a bang by keeping one of his own. Yep. No, I agree. Huge moves. Uh, this makes sense for a multitude of different reasons. Um, and for those who are coming to us from, uh, whether it was Twitter or Facebook, I apologize. Totally my fault with the fat thumbs. No, Mike Williams did not resign. He re-signed. I didn't put the hyphen there because I was twiddling too fast with my fingers trying to get the thing up. Yes, I'll fix it later. Apologies. My bad. Dan, um, the, the Twitter sphere holds no mercy to anybody no. who does not double check. <laughs> no, in fact, grammar. live, I'm going through and saying, my apologies. It's re-signed with the hyphen. Uh, next time I get a break from talking. Okay, so guys in the comments, gals in the comments, tell us, what do you think? What should the Chargers do next after they have signed Mike Williams to an extension? We're going to be talking about that, what their options are. We already have a bunch of guys in the comments talking about a one JC Jackson from formerly from New England who could potentially be something we can go after. But Mike Williams stays, and I cannot stress this enough. The Chargers kept Mike Williams, and it was – a smart play in the sense that it keeps as many options and it keeps the team as flexible as they can be heading into both free agency as well as the draft, as well as to next seasons as we get some other guys coming up on big contracts, i.e. Derwin James, i.e. Justin Herbert coming up pretty shortly. And also, sneakily, the Chargers are also spending less money on this because of the re-sign than they did on on the franchise tag. So the Chargers have more flexibility. They have more money. They can go into the draft with more options and they could still go out and sign that top tier blue chip free agent if they want, i.e. a Khalil Mack if they want to do some kind of trade, i.e. a J.C. Jackson, i.e. Uh, doesn't matter, Hakeem Hicks, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Day. Like there's so many guys that the Chargers go after and none of that changes because of the decision today. In fact, the decision went up because they were able to re-sign him and not have to worry about a 15 million or 18 point something million dollar cap hit on a franchise tag. Now, there were some people, as we all know, not everybody can be happy. We can't all have nice things. There are some people who were not quite so happy 
about this and we're complaining about what oh, you're well, kidding this, you're this kidding. is too much money too much money as if it's their spending as if it actually matters as if the one as if the cap space is even real two as if they understand like basic econ when it comes to the nfl like the nfl just went up like 20 something million dollars in complete in total salary cap without doing anything so right now, the Chargers just basically got Mike Williams for essentially free. If you want to look at the difference between last year's salary cap number and this year's salary cap number, what up like twenty something million dollars? But furthermore, you don't want to take a team that has arguably top three to five quarterback in the NFL already. Crazy talk. Who already has two receivers over a thousand yards? Who already has top five offense in almost every statistical category? You mean to tell me you want to take that offense and make it worse, and then hope that you can try to make it equal to, which probably isn't going to happen, the first year with going in the draft or dra- or going and signing some other random free agent wide receiver? Who now there aren't many because most of them got the franchise tag. That's not going to happen. Oh, we could draft wide receiver at 17. You could, but the chances of him being better than Mike Williams' productions in year one, slim to none. Slim to none. And that's just to get up to Mike Williams. So if you didn't bring back Mike Williams, your team had got, your team gets worse, and you have to hope that the team can get up to that level on offense again while also getting good on defense. Now, you get both. Best of both worlds, Mike Williams stays. All the consistency, camaraderie that he's built with Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, that nucleus, like you mentioned, is now mended together. And now, imagine if they kept Mike Williams and then go out and get some stud wide receiver in round one or round two, round three. It doesn't matter when. They literally can do anything right now. And that's because they kept Mike Williams. If they got rid of Mike Williams, we know what they're doing round one. Like, there's no doubt about it. So... It's a good day for the Chargers. It's a good day for fans of the Chargers. And Jake, it's also a great day for anyone who is going to Chargers games. Because not only are we going to see Mike Williams for a while, there's also a new guy in town who has decided to take his talents to Denver. And a one Russell Wilson. And you want to tell me, you want to go up against Russell Wilson, Jerry, Judy, Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, and then all those dudes over in Kansas City with no offense to Keenan Allen, but in terms of like explosive playmaking abilities, Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler as your top playmakers. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> so Charger, Chargers fans got about an hour and a half of <laughs> laughter pointing the finger at Denver Broncos fans because Everybody was up in arms and happy that Aaron Rodgers was not coming to the Broncos after essentially a year of speculation for that. And then, nope, Denver had an ace in the hole and had another deal worked out because apparently, and now according to reports, they got wind of Rodgers staying in Green Bay last Sunday. And so this has been a couple of days now that they've known about this. And they had a deal already set in place. And in truth, Seattle actually took less from another deal that Washington had on the table for Russell Wilson. And now the AFC West is essentially just a murderer's row of quarterbacks, depending on what you feel about one Derek Carr in Las Vegas. But the only people that are happy right now about this trade outside of the Denver Broncos fans is the Arizona Cardinals, the Los Angeles Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. They're happy. Everybody else get ready for a just, get ready for some competition in the AFC West because you think it was hard before it's going to get that much harder now. It is. Steve Demko comes out and says, we need to get some help for Austin Eckler. Uh, I think all of us, all of us would agree. Imagine if we didn't have Mike Williams, like imagine if we did not have Mike Williams and now you're saying we got to go get wide receiver two, probably wide receiver three and probably running back two. like that's a tall task. Like now you just go get a burner and you're set. At wide receiver. Oh, we could just Here. hire, you know, we could just bring back Travis Benjamin. I think that'll. Oh, yeah. That, Travis that Benjamin. Should, that'll Travis fix Benjamin, everything. Melvin Gordon will be That'll straight. fix everything. Yeah, we'll be fine. 
We'll be fine. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that's all we got. To have. That's the only time we have for today. Jake, anything else we we'll talk about? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, let's see talking. here. Um, Benjamin, I'm going to try to get to some of these comments, Jake, so you can kind of get to some of these before we get too many for us to get through. Uh, Benjamin Holman, the fourth. I, the fourth. I love that. We got to worry about plugging that D line up, getting Bosa some more help. Tillery isn't bad at all, to be honest, but we need help there. He's kind to Jerry Benj- Tillery. Benjamin, if you have not tuned into our defensive line uh, prospect breakdown, please do. It's it's on our channel on Chargers Unleashed. I guarantee you, because we did that video before the combine with all of our thoughts, all of our favorite prospects, and that. I guarantee you, after this combine week. When we refresh that list and do it in another couple of weeks, it's going to look extremely different. But uh, <laughs> as I have been saying since last year's training camp, I was worried about the depth in the D line coming in. It reared its ugly head multiple times throughout the uh, throughout the 2021 NFL season. So it's no secret now how big of an emphasis that the Chargers need to reinforce their interior to the defensive line. You have Linball Joseph, who's going to be a free agent. Uh, don't know the status of whether or not Justin Jones is going to be coming back. Christian Covington is also a free agent for your defensive line. So you could potentially have three guys and three holes to fill throughout free agency. I think the Chargers are going to be heavy movers in free agency. We all know the the uh, the links about Akeem Hicks mm-hmm. possibilities and the relationship between him and Brandon Staley. Sebastian Joseph Day is another one that's out there. And even if they do make a splash one here, two here, I could definitely see them going again in round one at pick 17 to re- help reinforce that interior of the defensive line. Depends on the player and obviously depends on who's still on the board at that time. But they should definitely be double dipping in free agency and the draft to try to shore up that need. This way, you're going to get more pass rush help for uh, for Joey Bosa outside of just an edge rusher. You're going to be able to fortify the interior of the defensive line a lot better as well. So no question about it. They need major help on the defense, especially with Russell Wilson coming to town. Yes. And again, I keep prefacing this because people are kind of staying siloed a bit. You can sign Mike Williams and still go get premium talent with blue chip players at free agency, there isn't one or the other. It just isn't. So a bunch of questions in here, Jake. Yeah, so kind of only, only a Sith deals in absolutes. That's, oh, that's what every, oh, yeah, you know, there. only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> that's the narrative that's out there apparently. So the first name that came up after all this news broke and you're starting to see little ink, little, little inklings of, uh, connections between the two. JC Jackson, Steve Demko says that we need to get some help for the defense now. Uh, then we got a bunch of questions here, Jake, asking about, should we go after J.C. Jackson or Khalil Mack? J.C. Jackson next, says Skylar Littlefield. What's the possibility of J.C. Jackson? So I think J.C. Jackson's on the mind. I'm thinking people like J.C. Jackson. Yep. And then, Matt, this is, maybe this is how we start the question. Would you rather spend big money and sign J.C. Jackson or draft a guy like Stingley? at pick 17 that's a good question you know i if i had my selection in that one and this is what it strictly comes down to i would say jc jackson for that because that sets in my opinion your secondary right there because you're probably most likely going to move asante samuel jr into your nickel spot you're then going to have your two bigger body corners and and michael davis and jc jackson on the outside as opposed to Derek stingley who, again, coming into the league, you're, you're one. How do you then rotate your defensive backs at that point? That could get a little bit interesting. And also just because of the lens frack injury, uh, lens frack injury that Derek Stingley's coming off of, that's no joke. That is nope. no joke, and especially for a defensive back coming off of that. I know he says he's ahead of schedule about it, but that does worry me a little bit. A little bit. Obviously, tremendous talent coming out of college, but if I had my choice between those two, I, I would definitely sign JC Jackson. Yep. Uh, Matthew, again, I'm terrible with last names. I'm so sorry. I'm not even going to try. I think because of Wilson to the Broncos, that will make Tom think a little more about jumping on defensive backs and linemen. To be honest, I think he was already thinking pretty highly about those positions. Sure, this probably helps a little bit. But if we're being honest, like we already have to deal with Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson isn't better than Patrick Mahomes. So us having a plan for Patrick Mahomes, I think will also help with Russell Wilson. So I don't honestly think it changes his mindset that much. 
it may just more reinforce it, in my opinion. What, what Who do you, was it that say? said it? Was it Telesco or was it Staley last week that said that, like, flat out, we will be putting an emphasis on the cornerback position? That was the uh, Staley. Yeah. We're, always looking for, we're always looking for cornerbacks. There it is. Yes. So, yeah, I think this only just reinforces it. Yep. Uh, let's see. Shred 74 or Shred 74. I'm not sure what exactly that has. But does having Brandon Staley give us a slight edge versus Russell Wilson because his Rams defense used to give him so many headaches? Suppose, supposing we get the pieces he needs for the defense. Certainly wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. I... <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for the day where the Chargers no longer have issues against mobile quarterbacks because they've had issues against mobile quarterbacks for the last 12 years, essentially. So um, on the flip side of that, when Staley was with the Rams, he had a guy named Aaron Donald who made things a lot easier, and definitely the Chargers don't have that. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you're going to have to get the pieces that you need to maybe not fully stop him, but maybe slow him down. Yeah, I will say uh, a friend of mine is a huge Rams fan, and he reached out to me as soon as the Broncos deal happened. Well, first he reached out to me congratulating me about Mike Williams, and then immediately— Oh, I thought, he, I thought he was reaching out to you just to laugh and, you know, smash it in your face that the, the Rams had won the Super Bowl. Well, oh, that too. That, that was well before this. That was weeks ago. I've, I've already taken that crow. Um, but weirdly, his take was, honestly, like— We've had to go up against Russell Wilson for a while. We've had his number. Like, he's not what everyone thinks he is or what he used to be. Uh, so a lot of people outside don't think he's as much of a problem as I think people are initially thinking. Now, obviously, Russell Wilson is like 57,000 times better than what the Denver Broncos had before today. So clearly the Broncos are better right now. Did they lose some important pieces? Absolutely. No offense, not there. Shelby Harris isn't there. Their first and second round picks till 2044 aren't How there. dare you not mention Drew Locke, Dan? Shame on you. Oh, yeah, and that guy. And that guy. Drew Locke isn't there anymore. Good riddance. Uh, but, like, their team is better. Everyone always said, give the Broncos a quarterback and that team a Super Bowl contender. And they got Russell Wilson, who I don't care how much you want to give him a slight, I think he's a top 10 quarterback. So, arguably, the Broncos went from having a bottom five quarterback in the NFL to a top ten. So, I'll, I, if I'm the Broncos fan, I'm taking that. But, again, the Chargers Chargers fans are still looking up at one team, in my opinion. If they can, if they can compete and if they can beat the Chiefs, it's a wrap. Uh, let's see. Steve Demko. Shout out tra- <laughs> Travis Butterfinger Benjamin. Those are the days. What's up, guys? Late to the party. Mike Dub is back, baby. Thank you, Robert Carper. Welcome to the show. Yes, Jake. I can't tell you how like relieved I was when I saw that Mike Williams was resigned. I think both of us thought he was going to be back one way or another. But like, it just allows us to kind of put to bed a lot of these, I don't know, a lot of these kind of like slogans that people talk about, whether it's like, you know, Chargers are cheap, or Coupon Tom, or we never resign our players, or we don't ever keep big-time talent, or insert all the things we've heard for years that have been, like, disproven 10 times in the last five years. But it's just, like, another one. And I know it just takes time for those things to kind of go away, but Mike Williams, again, former number seven overall pick, just came off a career year, and given who was left on the wide receiver market, because the guys who have already been franchise tags, Devontae Adams, gone. Chris Chris Godwin, gone. Mike Williams was the best wide receiver available. So if he tested free agency, you best believe he's about to get shown $25 million plus a year by some team. Because he's the best wide receiver left on the market where the cap space is going up $20 million, you're going to have teams that are going to fight for him. So people get all up in arms about paying 20 million. But again, you paid 20 million. If Mike Williams balls out this year in 2022, 20 million is a bargain, which sounds crazy. It's a lot of money, but given the NFL money, 20 million for someone who consistently can do, I don't know, 1200 yards and eight touchdowns. That's the going rate. That's the going rate. Wait till Chris Godwin resigns his contract 
extension, whatever that is, or Devontae Adams does his contract, and you tell me what you think $20 million gets you as a wide receiver. Look, Dan, the best part about this is that next year, everybody's going to forget everything that you just said. Everything's gonna forget. Everybody's gonna forget every point you made. Everybody's even gonna forget that Mike Williams was a big name at the time, as far as the free agent narrative that they like to say. But look, everybody just pushing this whole aspect. Uh, look, you have to, you have to keep your own, and I get it. It may not be the the contract that you would have given them. That's all subjective at this point. But. It, <laughs> some people just have to understand. It's like, look, if you want to blame somebody for for the contract, don't blame Tom Telesco. Maybe blame Kenny Galladay for resetting the market <laughs> last year with his four year seventy two million dollar contract. Maybe maybe get pissed at the Dallas Cowboys two years ago. They gave Amari Cooper a five year hundred million dollar contract. I mean, Mike Williams bet on himself in the final year of his contract, and he won, and he won. I, he. It, it, I understand everybody loves Keenan Allen, but Keenan Allen it ain't getting any younger. And so you need to start resetting some of these, uh, these wide receivers, re-signing them, keeping some weapons around Justin Herbert, because God knows you need him, not just with Russell Wilson coming into the AFC West picture, but obviously with Patrick Mahomes now. So these are some of the moves that you need to do. And when you did it like this, three-year deal instead of a four-year deal. I'm sure Brilliant. that everything in there, as far as language goes, the incentives, all that type of stuff, the Chargers still have a hell of a lot of flexibility to go out there and sign plenty of defensive free agents to fortify this unit and get set for the NFL draft. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, think about that. Five, how many, two years ago, he signed, Amari Cooper signed a five-year, $100 million $100 million contract. contract. And now they're looking like they're going to release him. And if he gets released, you know how much money he is going to make? I gar- I will put a hefty six-pack of whatever you want that he will get more than $20 million. Any takers? <laughs> I, I, think the Philadelphia- I think the Philadelphia Eagles may be interested in that. There's going to be a team who pays north of $20 million for a receiver not named Mike Williams who would not be as good as Mike Williams. I'm sorry. And honestly... Amari Cooper, totality, has had a better career. But if I'm looking at upside, if I'm looking at who I think has the best ceiling, it might be Mike Williams. We saw what he did in one year with Mike, with Justin Herbert in the right scheme. Give me a break. Yes, solo man. People mad about $20 million when the cap space just keeps going up from here on out. It's a bargain. I think you're right, Jake, and solo man. In a year or two... 20 million is going to look pretty. And again, you don't have to worry about it. Now, his contract as well as Keenan Allen's contract are about are up I think at the same time that Justin Herbert will be up for an extension currently. So, look, people want to give you know, it's one of those like damned if you do, damned if you don't. People mm-hmm. want to give Tom Telesco a whole bunch of crap for a lot of things. You're never going like, to be able to please anybody. We get that. No, but when I heard it was a three-year deal for twenty million, sign twenty million per average, sign me up. I think what was giving a lot of people heartache was uh, the not heartache, wrong word. Um, <laughs> what was giving people a little bit of heartburn. stress was was yes, heartburn. There we go. Was the thought of committing to like a five? Imagine if they did a five-year, hundred million dollar deal. That's uh, a long time. That I wouldn't have liked. That's a long time. And I, I again, like the wide receiver, did one, he had one great year. Is that worth a five-year contract? I think most would argue no. I think that's what people were kind of souring to. That's why they wanted to do the franchise tag. But three years, $20 million? Yes. Great. Honestly, I probably would have been okay with them paying a little bit more than that for a three-year deal. Because, again, you have more options. So I think that the main purpose of us going live today was just kind of have this be like a free flowing discussion of the Mike Williams discussion, kind of the AFC West as a whole and kind of like what's next. So I'll ask you this, Jake, or ask other people, how would you stack rank? We're not talking about on paper, but just like if someone asked you right now, stack rank the AFC West with what you think it's going to be come beginning of 2022. 
Would it Just be as, as teams? You're saying as teams? Would it be Chiefs, Chargers, Broncos, Raiders, or anything else? No, no, no. That's that's exactly how I would stack them. But the the gap between the Chargers and the Broncos, as it stands right now, has severely narrowed. Mm-hmm. And there is even an argument to be made that, that some people may take the Denver Broncos right now, specifically just because of the weapons that they have, not all, not just offensively, but defensively as well. That's sure. what they have spent a lot of time developing and drafting towards. And the Chargers have seen it. <laughs> They've lost to it a couple of times over the last couple of years. That is a very underrated defense, even without Von Miller, who might be returning here in the next week. I would so. if, I knew, if I knew Russell Wilson was there. <laughs> so I'll still give it to the Chargers just from the standpoint of I think that, you know, they have the better quarterback. And I think that they have a few pieces here that they can get an advantage over Denver. But um, that gap is extremely narrow right now. So you talk about a competitive AC- AFC West. It's still all about chasing the Kansas City Chiefs at the end of the day, though. And talk and think about just like I was thinking about this earlier. The sheer volume of stud quarterbacks in the AFC is I don't think I've ever in my life of being an NFL fan have seen this many and this much of a disparity between the AFC and the NFC or to either side. The amount of quarterback, like the top, I would argue almost all of the top five quarterbacks in the AFC are better than the best quarterback in the NFC at this point. Aside from Aaron Rodgers, aside from Aaron Rodgers, uh, Russell Wilson's gone. Tom Brady is gone. Like who's next after Aaron Rodgers? Are you putting like Dak? Are you putting Kyler Murray? Again, we talked. We talked about the the murderers row of quarterbacks that are just in the AFC West Conference alone, and now you add a Russell Wilson into that factor. It's just like. Whew. So, so then the other part is so now that we have Mike Williams, and we talk about talk about quarterbacks, looking at kind of the the draft that's kind of ahead of the Chargers. There are probably like one or two AFC. Mm, yeah, well, no, one, one NFC, one AFC team that could be potentially looking for a new quarterback ahead of the Chargers. Possibly three if we're talking about the Washington Commanders. It's going to take so long for me to be able to say that correctly without thinking too hard. Um, the only thing, I mean, again, whether it was Seattle or whether it was Denver who needed a quarterback, either one of them probably would have drafted a quarterback. So that kind of was a, a net nothing. But the Chargers, like, are, they're in a good spot at 17. I've, I've heard a lot of people kind of talk about, like, oh, all the good guys are going to be gone. And I'm like, no. Like, for what the Chargers need, they don't need a quarterback. They don't need an offensive tackle, at least a left tackle. Like, the positions that they need, like, there's going to be value. And you could potentially get DT1 or 2 easy. You can get probably CB4, CB3 maybe. I will preface this because I know that I've <laughs> that I'm a prisoner of doing this. Sometimes you get pigeonholed just on one guy to just say, "Oh God, we need this." You know, thankfully for the Chargers last year, they got the guy that you mm-hmm. wanted in the first round. But I've been a prisoner of that moment where I just, you know, I pigeonhole myself here and here and here. And most of the time, that it comes up to the draft, the Chargers for whatever position that they absolutely 100% need to go for in their draft, you have about six other teams ahead of you that could also go that way. Historically, that's where it's been. But this draft is so deep at so many different positions. It's going to afford the Chargers a lot of flexibility. Um, Obviously, with the Mike Williams signing, does it eliminate wide receiver in the first round? Not entirely, but does it decrease the chances that you go for it? considerably yes so you're looking at who's a corner that's going to be there if you don't happen to get a jc jackson or a chadavius ward in free agency could you go that route obviously with the interior of the defensive line Devonte wyatt the show that <laughs> the next planet jordan davis put on just 
had Charger fans drooling at the mouth for that. But on top of that, you go beyond Jordan Davis's performance. A lot of the interior defensive linemen that were projected second round picks, i.e. Travis Jones, probably going to go in the first round. I could definitely see the way that he tested, could definitely see a case that someone's going to spend a first round pick on him. So you're going to get some of these guys that athletically to go along with their film, they raised their stock up considerably. The interior defensive line showed out as well as the edge class. You talk about some athletic performers that were there. God, I would love for a Jermaine Johnson to be there at 17. How about a David Ajabo? I mean, some of these guys are going to get pushed down. Even when we get to the second round of the draft and day there two. Only third, there are only always, 32 options. It always happens. You could, you could essentially say right now that people have 50 first-round grades on guys, but mm-hmm. there's only 32 picks in the first round. So, Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. Nurses showed so much love to my niece, Piper, when she was born. Their care for her inspired me. So I decided to switch career paths to nursing and enroll in Marion University's Accelerated Nursing Program. Designed for non-nursing bachelor's degree holders, it offers a 16-month path to a nursing degree and blends online and hands-on learning with clinicals at Ascension St. Vincent. What are you made of? Search Marion ABSN to learn more. You're going to have some good players sitting there at 17, and there's still going to be good players that are, are available on day two. Yep. Um, yes, Dylan, I kept your thing up here for long just so everyone saw it. We had addressed this already. This was my bad. I will own and take the L. I quickly put resign and did not put the dash, and I'm not able to go in and update it until after the show is done going live. Apologies. I retweeted it with the proper re-sign with a hyphen in the middle. My bad. <laughs> I hope you learn from this mistake because the next time it I, happens, I'm going to be with them in the comment section or <laughs> them in the comment section. <laughs> them in the comment section. Yep. Um, man, I will say it was, it was a little interesting seeing how quick when the news broke about Mike Williams and we heard – you know, 28 million in the first 28, 28 Williams, 28 million in the first year. And immediately you got people irate about the Chargers spending $28 million. That's going to take away all of our money to spend on free agency and talent. And like, I had to sit there and be like, okay, please tell me that they read this correctly. Like, they're not spending $28 million on the cap. It's not affecting the cap for $28 million. Like, I don't know how many times i got to tell people this. And for those who don't know, okay, the Chargers, three-year, $60 million contract total. $28 million of that is guaranteed in the first year, I believe. That is spread across both salary cap and bonus. Bonus can be spread across three years. From all that I have seen, we don't know these specifics yet. And I think it's been confirmed. But what it looks like, the contract for Mike Williams, the cap hit for 2022, instead of the 18 point, I think it was five or six for the franchise tag that would go on the books for 2022, the new contract extension looks to come in around ish $15 million of cap hit in 2022. $15 million, not 28 to the cap. 15 million. Again, that's almost $4 million cheaper than what the franchise tag would have been. So calm down. I think people got a little crazy at first. And it, but it was okay. It was a weird part, Jake, was so many people were getting franchise tagged. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, Mike Williams was like the one guy who actually got the contract. <laughs> I like, and all of all the teams that you would have thought would have not done the contract, considering years past and all the figures, like, I, I was like happily proud, excited, grateful, thankful that the Chargers did it because like they stood out today as a team that re-signed their guys. Of course, Denver goes out and does their thing. 
Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay, Devontae Adams stays in Green Bay, Chris Godwin stays in Tampa Bay, like a bunch of guys, a bunch of tight ends end up staying. I'm not sure what the Cleveland Browns are going to do, but who knows? Uh, so it was a good day. Honestly, it was a good day. Uh, this one's going to be a short and sweet. We've got a lot of stuff coming up here in the coming days. I think tomorrow, Jake, we're going to be doing our cornerback prospect breakdown. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Jake and or folks in the comments, is there any other topics rapid fire before we head out? You'd like us Dan, to discuss? I, Dan, I actually have one for you. I don't think we should end so Ooh, quickly just because okay. obviously between now, next week, I know we're going to be doing the cornerback prospects. We'll obviously have uh, another guest on the show, so we may not be able to talk about this until then. But mm. pipe dream for you, free agency frenzy kicks off. Ideally, who's your guys? I know we already have a bunch of people in the comments. It's JC Jackson, you know, it's the JC Jackson show right now. But ideally, give me some names. Come on. I mean, I know that this is stuff that you and I have already talked about, and that should be yeah. common sense at this point, but let's hear it. So, theoretically, I would like to go into the draft. Already having my CB one, already having my CB three locked up. Meaning, if they can go out and get like a Traverius Ward kind of guy from the Chiefs, if they can get a JC Jackson and all of a sudden flip Asante Samuel into the slot, uh, there's a bunch of corners who could fulfill like the CB three role. If they can do that then that gives the Chargers the ability to either. I don't want them going after, honestly, any wide receiver at this point. That's more than, I don't know, $7 million this year. There's no need. Uh, now they have Mike Williams. Tight end, I really don't see them going after a tight end in free agency either. No, uh, I can see with, them. Not with the market and the franchise tags going out. Hell no. No. Um, I would say someone and it's a like deep a tight end class. Yes, I would like to see someone. I think the defensive line, honestly, is where I think they're going to have to put the most money towards in free agency. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they signed three interior defensive linemen in free agency and still drafted defensive line in round one. Like the defensive line is in that much need of work. I would say defensive tackle, edge, nose, like all three of those, I would take at least three of those. Um, Linebacker. Potentially, I would take. Um, people talked about like Tyron Matthew. Sounds great. I don't know how. I mean, you, you obviously would take him on your team. I don't know how that would fit in this team in terms of like roster construct. Like, what do you do with Nazir Adderley? Like, who slides over? I, I don't know. Um, look, JC Jackson would be great on this team. And the Chargers could go out and get him if they wanted to. Uh, but I honestly don't know if adding more resources to adding, put all, adding all our money in the, in a cornerback is where we get the most bang for our buck. We can get like two or three defensive linemen for the price of Jace Jackson and looking at how the team was constructed last year and what lost us games. It was like the CB three, four, five role that screwed us. And then it was like the entire defensive line other than Joey Bosa, basically. So I don't think it was CB one or two. That was the issue, which is what JC Jackson would be. Like it was a depth thing at that position. In my eyes, like it was starting caliber issue on, along the defensive line and arguably along the linebacking core too. But if Mike, if Mike Davis and Asana Samuel were healthy, like corner starting corner, CB1-2 wasn't the issue. CB3, Chris Harris, Tavon Campbell, Keeman Hall, like that was the issue in the secondary. And then when Nazir Adderley was hurt or Derwin James was hurt, you're having to rely on guys who have like literally never played. So that's where I'd go. Also love to see them get 17 offensive linemen in free agency, none of which are like quality starters, but like depth pieces I would love to see. I don't know if that's answering your question, but that's kind of where I would, that's like the strategy I would look for, like beef up defensive line of free agency. Like I want to see a bunch of dudes signed there and I want to see at least two or three corners in free agency. And I mean, 
I would obviously take JC Jackson, but like, I would rather them go after like a, like a CB three, like Traverius Ward would be great. I love that type of corner that can come in where you're not going to break the bank with him, but I don't think Traverius Ward is getting enough respect. <laughs> I agree. People said they were interested in, I get it. You'd like to see the chargers go after JC Jackson and him being the number one corner possibly on the market. I get that. But as a consolation prize, Jadavius Ward to pair with Mike Davis and Asante Samuel Jr., that's not bad. And hey, you take it away from a divisional opponent, that's even better. Totally. Totally. And like I think I know the Texans just got just let go of a stud edge rusher, I believe. Uh now that the the Bucks did Chris Godwin, Carlton Davis is probably gonna be available potentially. You got, I mean, we you already talked about Akeem Hicks. There's a bunch of edge rushers. I think like Hassan Reddick is one of them. Um, there's a bunch of guys that I think could come in. But in my eyes, if I'm Tom Telesco and Brandon Staley, I'm taking what was our biggest weakness, which was the defensive line, and turn that into a strength. To where if I can go into the draft, knowing that all I have to do for defense in terms of like starters would be like, get me a Jordan Davis type and we're straight or get me like a Jameson Williams type on offense. Like that's what you want to be. I, I just don't want to go into the draft needing a certain position. And if we can get a bunch of those guys at free agency, I mean, I think that's every team. It is but, every team. And it's but like, happen. I don't want to go in there with just getting like, for example, let's say the Chargers got, just get uh Hakeem Hicks. Okay. They add Hakeem Hicks and that's it. Like, that's not enough. No. No. So, I'll tell you this. Yeah, to me, and this is why I put such an emphasis on the interior of the defensive line, whether – actually, the interior of the defensive line or just the pass rush in general, even if you want to target the edge. We don't. We still don't know whether or not Enchina Nuoso is going to be returning this season. Um, but a good interior defensive line press, if you can get four and drop seven – I don't care who your quarterback or your wide receiver is. In the Chargers case, if you can't get pressure on the quarterback and they have seven or eight seconds to throw, then, you know, unless you're Deion Sanders or Darrell Revis, you're (laughs) going to lose coverage and guys are going to be catching balls. But if you can flip that around, good interior defensive line and edge pressure can definitely – let's just say disguise poor secondary play because if quarterback doesn't have any time and he's flat on his ass and he can't throw the ball and his timing's off, then nothing else (laughs) actually matters on that particular play. So to me, it's definitely interior defensive line or it's edge coming on, uh, coming, whether it's in round one or a high priority in free agency. Um, I, we've obviously heard all the things about Akeem Hicks, Sebastian Joseph Day. How about a BJ Hill? How about uh, a DJ Jones from San Francisco? There's a lot of guys there that could plug and play. Um, Harold Landry, who we just found out today from the Tennessee Titans, is not going to be franchise tagged, so he's going to hit the free market. I see some people are talking about Chandler Jones, and and we've obviously heard a couple things over the last couple of days about Von Miller. Now, personally, I don't see Von Miller coming back. I get the ties with um, – with Staley and Denver, but to me, along the same type of a line of a Chandler Jones, A, what's the market going to be? And two, both guys are north of 30. I just don't know. I would rather have a much longer term pairing to go along with Joey Bosa rather than a possibly one or two year deal for one of these older vets. That just doesn't seem like the right thing to do. I'd rather take that money and I'd rather spend that elsewhere. As far as Offensive tackles goes, yes, you need a right tackle. Uh, I would assume that Brian Bulaga would not be coming back next year, so that's going to give the Chargers some additional cap space whenever that uh, release ends up happening. Obviously, Storm Norton was not the answer last year. Um, The free agent tackle, yeah, the free agent tackle market is not good as far as right tackles goes. Uh, I saw season people saying Dennis Kelly. How about a Morgan Moses? Those are, that would probably be where the list would stop for me. But uh, this offensive tackle class, if you're looking for a right tackle and maybe you want to 
target that need, say on round two, round three, depending on how the draft falls, you can find a good right tackle in, in those respects in that standpoint. And I'd feel comfortable doing that wide receiver like you, Dan, this Mike Williams news obviously, obviously takes that out of the frame. Um, so yeah, to me, it's, it's a, uh, it's all defense. It's all defense. Um, Sorry, I forgot to even mention the the running back scenario and answering the question as far as getting help for Austin Eckler. How about a, a Ernest Johnson? You can find some possible number two running backs out there that may not cost you that much. Uh, don't know if Justin Jackson's going to be back. And Larry Roundtree and Joshua Kelly have not been the answer as an RB3. Would not be shocked if the Chargers spent yet another day three pick on a running back this year to try to find some extra juice to get some help in their running back stable. But Dan, yeah, this just all lines up defense, defense, defense for me. And it should be a point of emphasis and free agency and high in round one and two in the draft as well. It was kind of fun seeing what the Chargers did last year, where they kind of focused a lot of things on like making sure they didn't screw up Justin Herbert's success. And you know, Brandon Stanley was going to bed at night if he could fall asleep after those defensive showings. It was like, man. Like, I would love to be able to get some dudes on defense. And now, 11 draft picks. He's drooling at this. And I mean, he's drooling. But, I mean, Dan, this is, again, this is step one to, remember what I said. This the, Tom Telesco is still on the hot seat, in my opinion. This is the most pivotal offseason for him coming into this year. He's made the first move, and it's a good move. But he still has the most cap space that he's ever worked with as a GM, has the most draft capital that he has ever had in 10 years. If you can't land this, especially when you look at the draft classes that they have had since 2019, Justin Herbert as of right now is and Rashawn Slater are your two saving graces right now. Really, really. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, obviously the jury's still out on a couple other guys, but when you go back and you look at the drafts from 2019 to now, you got a hit on this draft if you're looking to compete in this window that Herbert has on his still on his rookie deal and try to catch some ground in the AFC West. It has to happen this year or he should be gone. <clears throat> Jake our friend HH4 is back. I'm pretty sure HH4 was one of the people who was saying the Chargers were not going to have a winning record last season and was a little down on many things. Um, coupon has no more excuses. Is it, it fair to is it is it fair to use that term coupon Tom anymore? I don't think he's ever going to be able to shake that 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 title for and whether or not you want to give it to him in the standpoint of him being cheap that he doesn't sign anybody again let's get rid of that narrative or from the fact of whether or not he actually makes some bargain signings and look at it that way depending on how you want to look at it whether you want to insult him or compliment him he's never going to be able to shake that nickname <laughs> he's just not I'll let's stop there uh man of the year asks can't wait for Jake to answer this. What would you guys say to drafting running back in the first round if we spend a ton in free agency? <laughs> if the Chargers go out and spend buku money in free agency and they go out and draft stud RB1 with pick 17, how many things is Jake throwing out the window? I'll be breaking my own windows, Dan, because you'll be <laughs> sitting about five feet from me if that was ever to happen. But no, 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 no. You're not looking for an RB1. You have your RB1. You're looking for essentially an RB2 or an RB3. Um, you know, if unless unless reality all of a sudden became fantasy football, then that would be the only justification that I would say of taking a running back at round one. Yep. Given, okay, maybe this could be, this could be the last topic, Jake. Given what we have seen today with Mike Williams coming back and – Projecting what we think is going to happen in free agency. All of that together. What is your strategy for drafting days one and two? <laughs> Come on, dude. Told you, man. To me, to me, even this Mike Williams thing makes it a hell 
a hell of a big difference. And especially if the Chargers are, if the rumors are true that the Chargers are actively going to pursue J.C. Jackson, then it's it has to be edge or interior defensive lineman. And pretty much take your pick with who's still going to be on the board at 17. So, so round one is edge or D-line for you? It, it should. It yep, should. Okay. And to be perfectly honest, it should be that for days one and two. So whichever one you select on day one, come back around in round two and take it then. Yeah. I, if it was me, I'm probably taking defensive line and edge, whichever one of those two you're not taking in round one. You're doing two of those in rounds one, two, and three. If it's me, now, I will I'm say do... this. I will say this. I would not be disappointed depending on how the board falls. If a Sky Moore is there, if a Cal in round two happens to be there in round two, yes, I yep. would not be disappointed. So that, that's where I was going. Whatsoever. That's where I was going because I think there's a couple guys that if they're available in two or three, depending on how we go, like let's say the Chargers go for uh, Carl Loftus or like a Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, uh, Travis Jones type. Okay. Then in round two, you got guys, like you said, Sky Moore, you could do Cal Austin, you could do, uh, I mean, uh, not Garrett Wilson, uh, George Pickett, you can do potentially like a, um, oh, Christian Watson, in theory, although I think he's probably going to be gone. Um, or hell, you can go round one and do like a Jameson Williams or something at 17. And then round two, you can go for like a Travis Jones type or a Karloftis type of V falls. Who knows? Damn, um, Travis Jones is not lasting until pick 48. Wait, but Jake, we keep, but we keep saying this. There are 50 guys <laughs> with round one grades. There's only 32 guys that are going to make it Just through saying, round one. Travis I, Jones I himself had a great combine. He's not lasting that far. I know. I know. Um, a couple guys uh, that people are talking about in the comments. We can kind of just go through this real quick. Um, people are talking about tight end room. They like to see us adding some guys from tight end. Dude, if, we, if the guy from UCLA, well, no, that's a pipe. No, he, no he ain't going to yeah, be yeah, there. Never mind. Never mind. He ain't going to be but How fun would that be? Um, do you think Jordan Davis will be available at 17? Trevor Sycamore. Our good friend of the show said it on his latest NFL Stock Exchange podcast. He said the floor for Jordan Davis is the Chargers at 17. Two weeks ago, the value for him was all over the place. Some people thought 17 was too high. We Jordan thought Davis. that was too yes. high. And I said if the Chargers were to consider a trade back, which is something that I've been asking for for I feel like 20 years now, if the Chargers traded back to say 25 – 27 somewhere around there a lot of people had jordan davis going there it wouldn't surprise me if jordan davis is gone by 12 wouldn't mm -hmm. surprise me at all so i think that there's still a considerable chance based off of the other needs of the other teams but i think that that chance now considerably shrunk yep reality check says we gotta go jordan davis if you're on the board jorge rodriguez calvin austin for sure round two Man, how many times have we on this show talked about the fantasy of Calvin Austin on this team? Now it that would... you know that you have Mike Williams back and you put that in a wide receiver room Ugh. with Keenan Allen, with Josh Palmer, with Jalen Guyton, you have two speed guys essentially now. And wow, all of a sudden... <laughs> Justin Herbert's just saying, <laughs> just go out there and get open, guys. And I don't care who it is. I'll throw it to you. Imagine like Christian Watson and Cal Austin. <sighs> just going bonkers. Why not? Um, HH4 says Alec Pierce. I actually like Alec Pierce. He's an undervalued wide receiver. He's tall, like 6'4". He's like a Mike Williams type, to be honest. Um, Devontae Wyatt, we got people talking about. Uh, people are asking, what about James Conner or Leonard Fournette to pair mm -hmm. with Cal Austin? Those are two names I didn't actually bring up. I'm not so, so sure about or Leonard Fournette. Austin Eckler, but, excuse me. Um, you know, James Conner, eh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, I He'd can see fit that. what we need. He'd fit what yeah, we need for sure. definitely fits what we need. Definitely do does that. I mean, so I could see it as a possibility. Um, no doubt about it. With the Ernest Johnson, yeah. Uh, let's see, James Wagner. We haven't seen you in a while. How you doing, man? Um, God bless you as well. 
Praying for a Slater caliber right tackle and to finish the brick wall for Justin Herbert. What are the chances percentage wise that the Chargers go right tackle at 17? I mean, uh, unless we're talking cross at 17, if he happens to be there, he shouldn't be there at 17. Um, Trevor Penning for as good of a combine as he had, I love it just from the standpoint. It's like, hey, someone asked him, how do you describe your game? And he just said, I'm a big, nasty prick, <laughs> which he he was. He was during the Senior Bowl. We saw all the highlights of him tossing people all over the place. But I just think from a standpoint, if we're looking at BPA and you're telling me who's on the board there, and if there's a guy like Jordan Davis or there's a guy like a David Ajabo that still happens to be sitting there at 17, I couldn't pass up either of those guys to go right tackle. So everybody would essentially have to be wiped off my board to be looking at an offensive tackle there. I just don't see it from the emphasis that the Chargers need to put in defense. But there are some guys that you can get on day two big time. Max Mitchell, who's one of my favorites, love watching this kid. I think he's – I think after – I think in the next couple of weeks, especially after he goes through his pro day, he's going to be getting a lot more love. But love what I see from Max Mitchell. So that's one to keep an eye on. All right, Jake. Rapid fire. We got some questions here. Ready? I think we can get Sky Moore in the second round. Some people have even put it in their mock drafts. So, uh, and Daniel Jeremiah said it. He's not getting out of the second round. So if you're you're expecting him to get to the third, no, it ain't. Sky Sky Moore, Cal Austin. Who'd you rather have for the Chargers? Either one of those, I'm through the moon. <laughs> that could be a, that could be a show within itself. Um, I don't care, honestly. I don't care. I might pick Cal Austin just because of that like game breaking speed. Like he, Sky Moore, I know is probably more versatile, but like, I don't know, fractionally so but Cal Austin is faster. <laughs> like, there's no doubt about it. Like, the, the, the Chargers could do nasty things. Specific beats. I need Jahan Dotson. Do you think there's a chance the Chargers can get... I mean, I don't think they're getting him at 17. No. That's too that's This too is rich. round two conversation, I think. Do you think he's going to be there? I mean, I don't. I, I personally don't think that he's going to be there. I would predict healthy. You could, you could arguably say... You could arguably say that five or six wide receivers could easily be off the board mm-hmm. come round one. I could totally I could totally see the Kansas City Chiefs being the Kansas City Chiefs and not that they need any extra damn weapons, but I could see them going wide receiver. Depends on the board where the board falls for them. Um, so by the time the Chargers come back around in the second round, I don't see Jahan Dotson staying staying on the board that long. No. Craig Smith, friend of the show. Talking Jake's language here. Big Somebody Craig. come get the 17th pick, please. Speak it into existence, buddy. I love it. Jake, chances of the Chargers trading back. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much zero if you were to ask me today. I've been asking for it for 20 years. I love me some extra draft capital because God knows this team needs to fill so many damn holes. But come on, man. If the board falls to you, if it's right, if – if you could get a quarterback or a team that's desperate enough to trade up for a quarterback at 17, give it to them. Yep. Give it to them. I'm all for draft. I'm all for dropping an extra five or six spots. If it means I'm getting an extra pick on day two, come on, man. <laughs> all right. So he adds, Tom has to play this smart. If they get JC, I'm assuming he's JC Jackson. They still need to come away with viable options at interior defensive line and edge in free agency which is still possible, especially with the Balaga cut. So as to yeah, not just, show their hands in the first round. Just as you were talking, Schefter decided to break some news. So one of the edge players that I was talking about in free agency, uh, not so the Titans decided not to sign our franchise tag, Harold Landry. Instead, they signed him to a five-year, $87.5 million deal that includes $52.5 million guaranteed. So that's like 18 plus per take, take Harold Landry off your list. Well, there we go. Unfortunately, <laughs> Jeez. So no. So I will say Craig, I agree with you. My, my hope is that they can go heavy on the defensive line in free agency. So that way they can go into the draft with options. That is my 
one hope. They can get CB3 and defensive line before the draft. I am a happy camper. Um, are you worried about Trevor Penning? I mean, yeah. I, you know, he's... Is, is, he a, is he a red flag to you, I should say? It's it's from a standpoint, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. It's Is he worth a first-round pick? Yeah, a lot of people would say that, and I would agree with it. Is he worth 17, though? And that's where that's where I would say I would probably have about fifteen players, maybe more, that I would have on my board before Trevor Penning. You, you at sound 17. like me and Chris Olave. Yeah, well, that's a whole other discussion that we don't need to get back into. Dan, Dan, go down to reality checks comment. His 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 next one right below this that. <laughs> now, this scenario, unfortunately, we because we've seen it. This has a much more <laughs> this has a bigger those, probability of happening. Just- for those just listening, Reality Check says, chance of the Chargers trading up? Question mark with eye emojis. And unfortunately, those chances are multiplying <laughs> and are much, 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 much higher than trading down. So, sorry. Melvin Gordon. Kenneth Murray. Mm. I. Mm. Uh, let's see. Reality check, last thing. Pending, we fill multiple needs of free agency. What are the chances Telesco trades up? <laughs> exactly. I'll, I'll give it... 11. No, 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 no. I will go... Yeah, Dan, I will go even higher than that, dude. I will, I will be bold enough to give it... I'll give it 22% that he could do something like that. 22%? 22% that he could do something like that. Oddly specific. A name we haven't talked about yet today. Uchenna Nwosu. Jorge Rodriguez says Nuosu is about to get paid. Yes, <laughs> that is true. I mean, he's not getting Harold Landry money. I mean, Harold no. Landry had just an absolutely ridiculous season. Um, what twelve? What do you think? Like twelve to fifteen? The numbers that I was hearing was anywhere between ten and thirteen million, depending on what it is that he's willing to take. Now, I know that he's the subject of. I mean, again, the Chargers had three players this year in the final year of their contract, all have career years, and Mike Williams and Chenna Nuosu and Kaiser White. If it were me, gun to my head, I'd rather bring back Kaiser White. But the fear that I've been talking about for the last several weeks now, all the tea leaves looks like Kaiser White will not be back with this team next year. And I hate that fact with every fiber of my being. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what people would be comfortable with Enchenna Nuosu signing with right now. All right, last question. And this is like asking which one of your kids do you love most? Did I just answer this? For the, Okay, so for the same money, you're picking Kaiser the, White too? Yes. Yes, I would. I would, Dan. And I, and I, I, yes. I get it. Some people may not agree, but... I think that Staley is just, he knows what he did in the, with the Kenneth Murray pick. He knows he traded up for that. He knows the investment that he put into that. So he's going to give him every chance that he can to try to prove himself and justify that pick, even if it means letting the better player go. Now, see, here's here's some negative Tom Telesco talk because we 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 defended uh, here him comes for the, the Mike pessimist. Williams. Here comes the pessimist, Jake Hefner, right at the end he, of the episode, coming on strong. We defend him for the Mike Williams signing and everything that he did in that circumstance from the money standpoint of being right. But I'll tell you this: if he lets if he lets Kaiser White go, look, number one, is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Is it the worst thing that Tom Telesco has done? It's one of them. It's one of them. It's pretty damn close. Uh, this is, I mean, (laughs) you do not want to see a Jake Hefner if, when Kaiser White is let go. No, it's, it's not going to be pretty. So I just, it's, it's, it's going to suck, but it's going to, but all the other things that hopefully Tom Telesco will do in free agency will help just give a little bit of a bandaid over that that knife in the back that he's about to deliver to the Chargers fan base. Yeah. yeah and then we're going to hear all those talks about Tom Telesco and need to get fired all over again. Uh, <laughs> tale as old as time. All right, Jake, we, uh, I think let's wrap, let's wrap this up. We have a huge episode coming tomorrow as we discuss all things 
cornerback when it comes to the Chargers and the draft prospect. We saw them ball out at the Senior Bowl as well as at the Combine in East West Shrine, all the above. We're going to talk about them. We're going to rank our top 10 as well as honorable mentions on the next episode. Um, for Jake Hefner, you can find him in his lovely backwards hat and his great scruff at Jake T. Hefner. Myself, you can find at Chargers Homer. For everyone who has been out there in the comments with the talk throughout, we appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we will talk to you guys next time on Chargers Unleashed. Bolt up. Chargers resign. Mike Williams, three years, $60 million. The guy stays. We get to see a whole lot, a whole lot of for the foreseeable future. We also get to see a whole lot of Russell Wilson. But you know what? Bring it. Bring it on. AFC West is about to be booming. Can't wait to see all these teams line up at SoFi. This is Charge Unleashed. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, you name it. Also, check us out on YouTube. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. For Jake Hefner. Bleh. Jake, we've been here too long. For Jake Hefner and myself, thank you guys so much. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And we will talk to you next time on Chargers Unleashed. Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. Quando liberi il bambino che c'è in te e fai le gare con il carrello del supermercato, quando i tuoi figli copiano il tuo stile e non devi più allontanare il cellulare per leggere, allora con Filman hai scoperto il tuo potere. Mostra il tuo potere. Occhiali progressivi, Filman a partire da 95 euro. Scopri di più su Filman.it. Occhiali, Filman.